Hey y'all, Tracy here with Just Dig It Farms. Today we're going to be getting back to our little series on how to design and create your own potage garden. This is part four and we're going to be talking about how to draw your design plans for your potage garden. Do not be intimidated by this at all. If you're not an artist, if you don't know how to draw, don't be intimidated by this at all. I'm going to give you some easy steps on how you can draw out your plan. In part three, we discussed a few things that you needed to do before we actually started designing and drawing out our garden plan. So if you haven't watched part three, go back and watch it now. And when you get those steps completed, come back to this video and we will work on drawing up your plan. Once you have determined your style, what you want and need out of your garden, the best location for your garden, and you've done a site analysis, then we're ready for the next step. I always recommend that you put your ideas and your plans on paper first before you ever walk out in your yard and start digging or trying to plan out your garden. Put it on paper first. Make all of your mistakes on paper first. This is going to save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, back aches, and a lot of money because some of those choices and some of those mistakes might be the wrong ones and they can be costly. So I always recommend that you first put your ideas and your plan on paper. And we're gonna start with the base plan. A base plan is a drawing, like you're looking down on your plan or on your map from a bird's eyes view. Now this plan will most likely change when you start actually building and creating the garden. But this is just a very good starting place. It helps you to figure out where things need to be in relation with each other. And it helps you get a scale and a measurement of the size that this is actually going to be and what you have to work with. So a base plan is always a great place to start. There's some wonderful garden and landscape design software out there that you can definitely use. Uh, you might could even find something for free that you could download and use, but I'm old school and I used to do this for a living. I used to do garden design and design plans for people for a living. And um, I always did it. I always hand drew everything. I, Jean actually bought me a really good software one time and I just wouldn't take the time to learn it. I just love the drawing process of this so much that I would rather draw it out. And my clients always really appreciated it because they said it was like a piece of artwork of their garden. And to keep it very simple for you, we're going to be just hand drawing your garden plans. There's a few things that you're going to need. We're going to start with a measure tape or a measure wheel if you have one. When I did this for a living, I had a measure wheel. Made everything so much easier, but I don't have one anymore. So a measure tape works just as good. And for this first step, you just need a regular piece of paper, notebook paper, computer paper, a clipboard is very handy, and a pencil. We'll go over the other things in just a minute. But that's what we need right now. We need the paper, the pencil, and the measure tape for our first step. Something that's very helpful in this design process, you can go to Google Earth Maps and pull up your property. You can print that out and you can work off of that on your design plan. The first step of drawing the base plan is to go out and get an overall measurement of the area that you've already determined is going to be your garden space. The easiest way to do this is to find a starting point, uh, something that's already existing in the area where you're going to be putting your garden space. Find a structure or something that's already there. It could be a fence post, it could be your house, it could be a shed, it could be a tree. Just find something that's existing that's already there and start measuring from there. So let that be your starting point. Get that overall measurement and then make sure you include in this, measure any existing things, any existing beds, if there's plants already there, trees already there, um, your house, like I said, fences, garden shed, compost, anything that's already there that's going to be a part of this garden space. You need to get those measurements as well. We are adding an addition to our potage garden. So right now we're working on designing that, laying it out and creating it. So I'm going to be doing that project with y'all so that you can actually see what I'm doing visually. You can see these steps in action. 
So this new edition, I've determined where it's going to be. It's going to be right off of my protege garden as an extension of it. And um, we've already started creating it, but I'm going to start from scratch with y'all on my drawing plans. And this edition is going to be a fruit orchard and a market garden style garden. Now, when I say market garden, we're not taking vegetables, fruit, or anything to market to sell. It's not produce to sell. This is just, we just grow produce and food for ourselves, for our family. But when I say market garden, it's going to be laid out in the style like market gardeners do. We'll talk about that style later as we develop it. Right now, we're just going out and getting overall measurements of our garden space and any existing structures, plants, trees, we're gonna get those measurements as well and just put them down on paper. In my office now I would much rather be in the garden or on the porch drawing but it's way too windy out there and it's about to start raining so we're just gonna have to work in my office today. before we get started I want to tell you about a couple of exciting things so today is Thursday February the 29th tonight at 6 p.m. Central Time I will be a guest on the Texas Garden Guys podcast and I would love for you guys to come over and watch us and join us. It'll be live and you'll be able to ask questions and it's just gonna be a really fun time. Jason at Coghill introduced me to him. His name is Destin and I'm looking forward to this podcast. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's called The Garden Party. Um, it's going to be on YouTube, Spotify, and Facebook, but what I'm going to do is put a link in the description of this video so that you can go over and start following him, and then you'll get a notification of our when our podcast is live. I would love for all of y'all to join us tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. The other thing is tomorrow is March the 1st, and our March newsletter will be coming out in the morning. If you have already went over to our website and subscribed for our newsletter, you'll automatically receive it in your email. If you haven't, y'all go to our website, justdigitfarms.com. A little box will pop up asking you to subscribe for our newsletter. Just put in your name and your email and you'll receive a newsletter at the first of every month. 
I'm really excited about this newsletter. It's free for y'all, and I feel like it's really going to be helpful for you as a gardener. So if you hasn't, if you haven't subscribed already, go to our website, subscribe for the newsletter, and look forward to receiving it in the morning. So now that we've got all of our measurements, and this is mine that we just did outside. This is the overall measurement here. From here over is the potage garden, and this is what's existing that's going to uh, be part of this garden area. So I drew those in with those measurements. I've got the overall measurement, and you can see it's just a messy drawing, not to scale or anything like that. Now we're going to take this and create a base plan that is to scale. You're going to need a couple of supplies. We need graph paper. Now, when I was doing interior design and landscape design, I used an architect scale and I didn't use graph paper. I just used this to uh, do my drawings to scale. We're not going to get into this today because probably most of you don't have one of these. So we're going to just use graph paper. You need a good pencil and a good eraser and you need a straight edge. So these are my straight edges, but you can just use a ruler, whatever you have, just to draw that straight edge. And this is optional. You don't have to have these, but these are templates. You can order these online. Um, drafting supplies, I think is what they're under, but you definitely do not have to order this. You can just draw circles or shapes and just freehand it. But I have all different kinds of templates here. I have landscape templates, interior design templates that I also use for this because it has nice squares and circles and tables and chairs. And this is a circle template and these are uh, plant templates there. So if you have templates, you can use them. If not, you can just freehand draw the shapes. Super easy. It doesn't have to be anything detailed or hard. Just a circle to represent a tree would be fine. And when we get to our final plan, you might want to use some colored pencils or some markers just to make your plan pretty or to use colors as a symbol to identify different things on your plan. You don't have to do this. It's not necessary. It's just something fun. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these messy measurements that we just took outside of our garden space and we're going to put them on graph paper to, and get it to scale on our base plan. Now that I have my eyes on, what I mean to what I mean by to scale is if you take this graph paper and you say one square is going to equal one foot zero inches, or you can say one square equals two foot, or one square equals five foot. If you've got a really big garden space that you're trying to fit onto this little bitty paper, one square is going to need to represent more footage. So you might want to say one square equals five feet or four feet or whatever you want to do. Just know that if you have a smaller garden that you're working on, it might fit well on this graph paper by just letting one square equal a foot. But if you've got a larger garden space that you're working with and you're using this little eight and a half by 11 paper here, then you might need to make your squares represent more footage, like one square equals five feet. And I believe that's what I'm going to need to do because my space out there is pretty big and my graph paper is not. My squares on my graph paper, I'm going to do four feet. One square equals four feet. Now I'm going to write that down on my paper. It's called a scale bar. So I'm going to put scale is one square equals four feet zero inches. You want to make sure you put this on here so that you'll remember what your bar is, what your scale bar is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these messy measurements right here and I'm going to put them on this graph paper to scale. So my starting point, I'm going to start it right here on my paper. And this is my starting point that I measured from right here. That's a fence post. So I'm going to do the same thing on here. Now from this fence post to this end, this is going to be the overall length, uh, width of my garden here is 112 feet. I wrote it down there. So I'm going to go from here 
up here, 112 feet. So four will go into 112 28 times. So that's 28 squares. So I'm going to count that. This is my beginning square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 25, 26, 27, 28. Just right. So that is my measurement from here to here represents 112 feet. Because that is 28 squares at four feet per square equals the 112 feet. Now I'm gonna take my straight edge and I'm gonna draw that straight line of my garden beds, of my overall garden measurement. Okay, so we've got that measurement. Now we're gonna get the next measurement, which is gonna be from here. We're gonna go back to this same beginning point, this same fence post. From there, this length of the garden space, and it is from here to here, it's 87 feet. So now I'm going to go 87 feet divided by my four is 21 and three fourths. So now I'm going to go 21 squares, one, two, three, four, 19, 20, 21 squares, and then three-fourths of a square, which would be right about there. Now I'm going to take my straight edge, and I'm going to draw that line. Okay. Now we've got this measurement, and we've got this measurement. Now we're going to draw in this measurement. From here, the end of this line to here is 56 feet. So, four will go into 56 14 times. So, that's 14 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 squares right there. Now, I'm going to take my straight edge. And this is not right on the line because that was a 3 fourths. So, I'm going to go straight up right there. All right, now we're going to get this measurement from here all the way back to the end up here, which is exactly 100 feet, and it's on a curve. So I'm just going to do my best to draw that curve. Here to here should be right at 100 feet on a curve. Now we've got our overall measurement of our garden space. That's what the garden space is going to look like. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna put the existing things that were out there. So what was existing in the garden was this fence post, which a fence runs this way, and these garden beds right here. These are the protege garden beds. So the end of the protege beds is going to be part of this new garden. So I need these measurements. So this is my fence post here. My beds are on the back end. So I'm just gonna draw, I'm just gonna draw them on here. They're really longer than this, but we're just gonna draw them. And then you can see I wrote even the measurements of how wide this was. So that's 11 feet. So four, eight, nine, 10, 11 would be about right there. And then it was seven feet wide. So let's say, so that's five, six, seven. That's about where the pathway is. That's a new bed. Okay, so that's the pathway there. And then we go 17, so four, eight, 12, 16, 17, that's how wide that bed is. They're not all the right, the exact measurements. Okay, so we've got our overall measurement here of our garden space, and it is to scale. We've got anything that was existing that's part of the garden, and it's to scale. 
We've got our scale bar road on our base plan. Now we want to put our uh, compass rows. And what that is, is that's just your directional compass. So you should have already figured this out when you did your site analysis. Which way from this garden sp spot, which way is north, south, east, and west? For me, this is north, this is south, this is east, and this is west. So my compass rows will look like this, really. It's going to go north, east, south, and west. So that's just showing the directions of my exposures. My northern exposure is this way. So this will be northern exposure. This will be eastern exposure right in here. This is my southern exposure, and this is my western exposure. So this is going to be the hottest part of my garden. Okay, we've got our base plan done. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna make multiple copies of it. Okay, I just made multiple copies. I've got about five copies here. And what we're gonna do, this is our base plan. It's to scale, it's accurate. Now we're gonna take this and you can do your site analysis on this. You can take all the information that you gathered from your site analysis and you can use one of these and put your information on your plan. And it just makes it easier to refer back to this during the design process. You don't have to do this. You can just refer back to your notes if you want to, but I always like to do a little drawing of the site analysis. So this is what that would look like. This will be our site analysis plan. And on this, you're definitely gonna want your compass rows, which is just our, shows us our exposures, our Eastern, Northern, Western, Southern exposures. And you might wanna put on here, if you have which way your wind's coming from, where does the wind gust from? So for us, it comes from, this is our Northern winds and it comes from this direction. So you might draw wind like that, whatever makes sense to you. You might also want to put on here a sun and shade map. This would good, be a good place to record um, any shaded spots or sunny spots. So for me, it's all pretty much sunny. This whole garden is gets full sun. This would be my morning sun. My sun rises right here. And this would be my morning sun all throughout here. And then this over here would be the afternoon sun, which is the hottest sun. So that this area will be the hottest sun right here. And the rest of the day is full sun. Now, if there was a spot on your garden plan where it was shady, you might want to just come in and shade in that spot. And you could put on there, like, what time of day it's shady. 4 p.m. it gets shade. So you can create you a sun and shade map on this side analysis. This would also be a good place to put like any kind of soil notes that you have. Maybe if you have uh, clay soil or sandy soil, you might want to put on here like anywhere that slopes. So let's just say this area right here has a slope to it. You might want to indicate something to show that there's a slope right here. The terrain of the property changes a little bit and you could just write slope on it, slopes down. You might want to also make some notes on here, like if there's going to be a problem with deer or any kind of wildlife problems, or maybe like right here is invasive uh, poison oak that needs to be removed. You might want to make that note on here on your site analysis. You might want to say that right in the center here, it kind of puddles water right here. And that's going to be a really wet area, so put that on your site analysis because you either want to plant something here that loves water and wet feet, or you might need to address this issue here. You should have already done your site analysis to be able to determine the best location for this garden. So you're just taking all of that, those notes and you're putting them on a plan. Like I said, you don't have to do this. You can just refer back to your notes. I just usually like to do this. Now our next step is to do a bubble diagram. 
So we're gonna take a clean copy of our base plan. We're gonna put our site analysis over here because we will be referring to it. But we're gonna take a clean copy here and we're gonna do our bubble diagram. A bubble diagram is just a basic drawing using bubble shapes to determine the different spaces and the relationship between the different spaces. So let me show you what I mean. Now this is just gonna be drawing loose bubbles just to show where certain area, what the certain areas are gonna be. So I know that I want this to be fruit. Okay, I want this to be fruit, espalier fruit. Oh, and I want this to be fruit. And then I want this whole area in the middle here to be market garden. I want this to be my entrance. And I want this to be my exit. Remember, this is the potager garden over here. So I'll need an entrance from there into here. And this and this will be an entrance. Now yours may look very different than that. So let's just do another example. So let's say this is your garden space. We're gonna keep it super, super simple. One big square. Now say you want a greenhouse. So where will you put the greenhouse? Let's put it where it gets a southern exposure. So let's say the greenhouse will be up here. Okay, now you're gonna want, um, let's say you want a garden shed. Where do you want the garden shed? Maybe here, a garden shed. Okay, now let's see, what about a compost? Well, you want your compost near your greenhouse. So that's gonna be in relationship with each other. So we'll put our compost here. And let's see, you want uh, garden beds. So where do we want the garden beds? You might want one here. We might wanna do raised beds here. And we might wanna do the rest of the garden beds here and here. And this is my home back here. That's my home. And I'm gonna walk out my home. And that's gonna be my entrance. On my home, I want a porch overlooking. I want a porch overlooking my garden. So all of these things are in relationship to each other. This will be my pathway, kinda. So that's gonna have to be an exit. So you're just drawing bubbles. Of, of where you want the different spaces of your garden or your landscape or even your home. We, do, we use bubble diagrams in interior design as well. The bubble diagram is super simple. It's just drawing loose circles, just showing the different areas that you want within your garden. This goes back to that list, that dream big list of all the different things that you wanted in your garden. And you're just taking those and you're kind of finding a place for them, playing with it. You may have to use another clean copy and do different layouts. You wanna make sure that you're connecting things together. Now that we've done our bubble diagram and we kinda of know where we want the different areas of our garden in relationship to each other, now we're going to take this and do our preliminary plan. Now this is where we're getting some structure to this bubble diagram. We're gonna be figuring out what our style is, if we want um, informal or formal style, what shape beds we want. Uh, we're gonna be determining where our pathways are. Um, you might even start making notes of the hardscape materials you might wanna be using. Uh, where your plants are gonna be. Now this isn't actually identifying what plants that you're gonna be putting there. You can if you already know, but it's not like making decisions that I'm going to be putting a gala apple in this exact spot. It's just showing where you're going to be putting your plants. Like I said, if you do know already, 
uh, what you're going to be putting in that spot, go ahead and put it on this preliminary plan. This plan is where you'll be making notes of trellises or arbors or pergolas, different structures like that that you're going to be adding to the space, your greenhouse, your garden shed, your compost, whatever spaces like that that you're going to be adding to your garden. You want to go ahead and get them on this preliminary plan. This isn't doing it to scale. This is just drawing it in um, loosely at where it'll be, location, where they're gonna be in the garden. The first, I like to keep my bubble diagram over here so I can see it, but the first thing I like to do is I like to kind of determine my pathways. So I know this is going to be an entrance, that's gonna be a gate, and I'm gonna have to have an exit point, and what I wanna do is I wanna be able to drive through right here with my um, ATV and go right through here and come down this way I want this whole thing to be a road and I want to be able to exit right here and that takes me around the chicken coop and down to the creek. So that's going to be a road. This is my gate entrance. This will be a gate exit right there. Okay, I figured out that main pathway. Now this is my protege garden. And I need to be able to get from there to here. So I want this to be an entrance from Potage to Market Garden Orchard. And this to be an entrance. And probably what I want to do is I want to make some arches right here. Like my rose arch out of cattle panels in the Potage Garden. I want to mimic that. And that's going to lead me into this area. Now I know that this is fruit here. So this will be a fruit berm. I'm gonna make a berm all the way around this garden to put, to grow my fruit on. So it's gonna look something like this. Okay. And then from, that's my berm. So I want to come in for my berm because I want this road to actually be able to go around. I want to be able to come in, go down, and actually go around this berm with my ATV. So that's a pathway because I want to be able to drive all the way around it and be able to unload compost or different materials that I need. So that kind of gives me my bed. I can see that this is a, a, a my road. So this right here will be my market garden bed right there. So that's my bed. This is my road. This is my fruit berm. Let me just shade it in so I can keep up with what's what here. That's my fruit berm. Okay. This is, that's my road. This whole thing is my pathways. And this is my new garden bed here. So I'm just going to write on here fruit, fruit, fruit. Pathway, pathway, this is my main roadway, and this is my new market garden. So now that I've kind of got this figured out, I'm going to make a few notes in here. So this is my fruit. I know I want to do a spalliered fruit right here. I want this to be like an espalier wall, and this will be my fence wall. And I know this is gonna be figs because I've already got them there. We already planted them there. And I think I have four figs right through there. This right here is gonna be a fence that mimics this fence over here on this wall. But I'm going to grow some fruit up at this fence. And I think I'm, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet. But I know it's going to be fruit, so I've wrote that down. My pathways are just going to be grass. I know that. 
The next step will be our final plan. Now this is where we take all of the information from our preliminary plan and we put it on paper to scale. This is where we're gonna go back and we're gonna get accurate measurements. We're gonna figure out exactly how wide this path is gonna be, how wide this berm's gonna be, how big this garden's gonna be. We're gonna figure it all out to scale on paper. The final plan is also where we'll identify what plants we're going to be using here. We know this is figs, but which fig varieties? We know this is going to be espaliered fruit, but which fruit am I going to espalier here? What am I going to grow on this wall? Um, what's going to be within my market garden? What's going to be on my arbors? We're going to start um, really getting details to this plan and getting it put on paper to scale. So let me show you one of my final plans of the Potager Garden and the new addition. It's all to scale. It has a lot of details on it. You can see this is the new area over here that we've been working on today. This is the Potager and this is coming into the new area. So this is the fruit border going around that we just drew out on our preliminary plan. And it has lots of details on here so that it's easy to construct. Now you can see on this plan of the Potager Garden, these beds here, my garden beds, only have like garden bed one, garden bed two. I don't have what specific plants are in here. And that's because in my Potager Garden, I rotate my beds every season. So something is always going to be different in these beds. I can take this bed and like blow it up onto another piece of paper and I can have the details of what I'm going to have planted in this bed, like my whole companion plan um, that's going to be in this bed. Also, you can take it and figure out your crop rotation plan. So this year, this is going to be um, summer squash. So I'm going to make sure that summer squash is not in here on a rotation. The next year, this may be summer squash. The next year, this will be. Then this. And I'm going to keep my beds rotated so that nothing's grown in the same spot for quite a few years. So once you have this final plan, you can break it apart and create companion plans, crop rotation plans. Um, you can do a lot of different things once you get your final plan done. So this right here is my preliminary plan of the garden space that we worked on today. And this section from here over is the final plan of that same garden space. And this is what it looks like when it is put to scale and all the details are put in there. Okay, y'all, you just got a design class one-on-one -on, -one on how to draw a design plan. And I hope that was helpful. I hope you understood it. It wasn't too complicated. I hope I made sense and it was easy for you to understand. And I gave you some very applicable steps that you can take to start drawing out your garden plans and create your own potage garden. Like I said, it all begins with a plan. Get all of your ideas, uh, play with it, move things around, um, figure it out on paper before you ever go out and start building your garden. And it will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. And it's just fun. It's a good creative outlet. Even though you don't know how to draw, you may not be an artist at all and you don't think you can do it, you can definitely do it. Um, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It just needs to make sense to you. And um, I think you'll enjoy it. I think once you get started and you get past that, oh, I can't do it. Once you get past that and you start really working on it, I think you're going to find a lot of joy in this process. Okay, y'all, I hope that was helpful and I wish you the very, very best in designing and creating your own potager garden. Now, as we develop this new addition to the potager garden, I will bring you guys along with me and show you how we take it from this plan and we actually build it. So y'all can walk through the whole process of that with us throughout this year as we're building that. And I look forward to hanging out with y'all again soon. God bless you.